Treasurer Wayne Swan there and Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey also addressed the media this afternoon in Sydney. Today, the Reserve Bank has just announced that it is increasing interest rates by a further quarter of 1%. For everyday Australians, this is the head high tackle they did not deserve. For everyday Australians, suddenly life has become more expensive. Kevin Rudd promised to keep interest rates down. Kevin Rudd's policies were meant to keep interest rates down. You can't believe what the Prime Minister is saying about interest rates. This is another example of Kevin Rudd promising but not delivering. He said he would make housing more affordable. He said he would reduce the cost of living for everyday Australians. For Kevin Rudd's working families, the cost of living got higher today and it's going to go higher again. Uh, everyday bills such as electricity, water, education and health have gone up and the Reserve Bank said in its statement today that they're the sorts of things that are causing the Reserve Bank to be alarmed about inflation. That is going to cause uh, interest rates to continue to rise. <clears throat> now, we are going to hear from the Treasurer today about how he is warning the banks not to go beyond uh, the official cash rate. Well, Wayne Swan can huff and puff and try and blow the banks down, but he fails every time because the banks are putting up interest rates by more than the cash rate margin. And if you look at the Reserve Bank website, the startling truth emerges. In January 2008, the gap between the cash rate and uh, residential secured mortgages for small business was 3%. It's now nearly 5%. Uh, in the case of uh, the standard variable home loan rate, in January 2009 it was 2.6% gap, uh, now it is 2.9%. As of today, the standard variable home loan rate will be around 7.5% and for small business, for small business, their uh, uh, overdraft rate will now be nearly 11%. So together with Kevin Rudd's increase, in the superannuation contribution on the weekend of $10 billion a year for everyday small businesses, they're now about to have an overdraft interest rate of around 11%. Kevin Rudd promised the Australian people that the cost of living would be better. Kevin Rudd promised the Australian people uh, that he would ease the squeeze. Well, today the squeeze became almost unbearable for Kevin Rudd's working families and all because he made promises and he has not delivered. Is there a housing bubble? Uh, well, if there is a housing bubble, Kevin Rudd promised to make housing more affordable and he has failed spectacularly. The problem is he promised to do something about supply. There is not enough supply in the market. Most governments in Australia are Labor governments. They control the supply of land. Uh, I would say to Kevin Rudd, if you truly want to deliver on your promises, fix up the level of supply of land. Ring up your mates in the States, uh, end the blame game that you've been talking about, and get more supply of land into the market. But I just add this. Uh, we've seen increases in interest rates in recent months. Those increases haven't stopped the price of real estate going up. Yet Mr Rudd promised the Australian people faithfully that he would make housing more affordable. This is another policy failure. Uh, ultimately, if you can't believe the Prime Minister with his promises on interest rates, you can't believe him with his policies on interest rates, then you can't believe what he says today about interest rates. Just on the mining tax, why won't the opposition say whether it's going to support the mining tax? Well, there is no legislation before the House. Everyone is speculating on how this mining tax is actually going to be structured. No one actually knows how it's going to be structured because the government has simply said it's going to collect $9 billion extra a year uh, and, uh, and everyone's trying to work out how, in fact, this new $9 billion a year tax is going to be structured. This is a $9 billion tax on jobs. If you want to kill jobs, go ahead with the mining tax in its current form because that's going to destroy jobs throughout Queensland, 
regional New South Wales, regional Victoria, regional South Australia, of course regional Western Australia and Tasmania will be affected as well. And the Northern Territory won't be exempt. Uh, you know, I want to also uh, debunk the suggestion that the mining tax is going to do something for people's superannuation. The increase in superannuation comes either out of workers' pockets or out of employers' pockets. Kevin Rudd hasn't even declared out of whose pocket it should come, other than to say he's leaving that to future negotiations. Not one dollar of the increase of 3% in superannuation is coming out of resources or coming out of the federal government. It's coming out of either the workers' take-home pay or it's coming out of companies. If it's coming out of workers' take-home pay, I can tell you the workers of Australia with higher electricity prices, higher water prices, higher food prices are not going to be excited about having less take-home pay because Kevin Rudd thinks it's a major new policy initiative that's going to win him votes. So when will the Coalition say whether they will? Well, when we see the legislation. When are we going to see the legislation? <laughs> I'm asking you a question. When are we going to see the legislation? Well, I don't know when we're going to see the legislation. You know, this is, this is part of the never ever, never, never ending sort of uh, story from, from the Prime Minister. When are we going to see the legislation? I want to see it. I want to see how the businesses are taxed, whether it applies to all existing uh, enterprises. I want to know what the final look is of the uh, commodities that are exempt. Uh, for crying out loud, uh, uh, you know, it is perfectly reasonable for us to consult with industry in a way uh, that the government didn't. And I think it's important before you vote on a piece of legislation, before you declare your final vote on a piece of legislation, you actually consult with people. I think that's pretty important given that this will take us to the highest mining taxes in the world and given that tens of thousands of jobs of Australians could be destroyed by this huge $9 billion a year tax on resources and suddenly we're expected to declare a position when the government hasn't even explained what it wants to do and how it's going to do it. It's extraordinary. I, you know, I, 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 I just despair for the workers out there who have built uh, their houses on hard-earned money out of the mining industry and now they're about to be slugged with a tax that ultimately is going to cost jobs. Of course it is. How can you introduce a $9 billion a year tax and expect it's not going to cost jobs and it's not going to cost growth. It sounds like it's impossible. A well, I mean, it's the, the numbers are there. The numbers are clear, not the legislation. The numbers are clear. And the numbers are saying $9 billion a year. Uh, that's, uh, that's a huge amount of money. That's a huge amount of money. Uh, and it's going to have a profound impact on workers. I mean, I've never seen any industry grow with massive new tax. I've never seen more jobs as a result of a massive new tax. I've never seen more prosperity as a result of a massive new tax. Just in regards to the polls, do you think the Coalition is making inroads? Look, I think people are seeing through, as clearly illustrated uh, in the satisfaction and dissatisfaction ratings, um, I think people have clearly uh, become quite upset with the Prime Minister and upset with Kevin Rudd. Uh, and as for the two-party preferred, it bounces around a bit. Uh, I think that is uh, uh, a number that is just going to bounce around a bit. Uh, but what is quite clear is that people are starting to see through the but Prime Minister. And but it must make the election contestable. Now, well, every election is contestable. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here. <laughs> I hope it's contestable. It, it, it must mean that the Liberals... Yeah, well, are look, you, you, you know, it's a two-horse race. It's like running onto the pitch for a grand final. Uh, you never give up. You fight as hard as you damn well can. You never know what comes out at the end of the game. When you